when Leicester Square played host to the film's European premiere, Eat Cinema was there and very excited. Uh, Elizabeth Swan in the film. Yeah. Now, in the first one, she's not exactly a typical girly girl then. I mean, does she get even tougher in number two? No, but she does. I don't know. She was a pretty girly girl for me. So, um, yeah, she does. I think in the first one, it was difficult to know where to take her because she was very straight laced. You know, she was sort of very black and white. So, we've really kind of made her more grungy. She's, uh, she's got a bit of a dark streak in this. We didn't get to speak to Johnny Depp earlier. So, we're going to have to ask you the question everyone's asking. The kiss. I mean, were you just a little bit nervous about doing that scene? No, I was absolutely fine until about halfway through it and I suddenly my 14-year-old self started jumping up and down and yelping. It was lovely, you know, it's great. Orlando. 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 How would you describe your character? I mean, I see him, he's a bit of a sort of male Medusa. His beard is alive. It is a bit like that, actually, yeah. He has a live squid growing out of his chin which is kind of problematic. I've played a zombie and I've played a vampire and now I'm playing a squid. And I don't think if you check the whole of this square you wouldn't find anybody else who could say that. Now what do you like about being a pirate? I mean is it literally like a, a, a young boy's dream? Is it like playing? Well it is really. I mean I, I can't remember specifically playing pirates when I was a kid but, but I'm living it now you know and and the sword fighting and the, the swinging from the, the, the rigging and everything, that's all real. Did you have to sort of account for the fact that you had a fake beard they were going to add in post-production? Did you do beard acting? Yeah, yeah, you had to do a lot of beard acting and you had to make sure you didn't get too close to people otherwise they'd get involved in your tentacles and you had to remember that one leg is a crab leg and the other and one arm is a claw and you had to remember that you smoke through your neck. All very technical stuff, you see what I'm saying? It's not easy. Away from the mayhem, the stars took time out to tell us what it was like to work on such an extravagant film. It's incredible being part of such a such a huge production. I mean, really, there's it's pretty much the biggest movie to have ever come out of Hollywood in terms of yeah size of production, budget, amount of people working, and the expectation. So yeah, I mean, what can I say? It was it was quite awe inspiring. It was fantastic. I mean, it was just so much fun. It's always a slightly nerve wracking a bit like watching yourself in a car crash experience but with something like this you know you you sort of have a vague idea that it's going to be quite big and impressive so it was it was exciting you almost can't comprehend how how much goes into it and how many crew i think you know there's a thousand of us on grand bahama island at one point and we just sort of invaded the place Amazingly, this film was spawned by a Disney adventure ride, but the stories in all three episodes are inspired by time-honoured nautical legends. You think of the sea and there's a lot of supernatural stories you've heard, but nobody would ever actually done those stories as part of a larger pirate movie or swashbuckler. We brought in the Flying Dutchman, which is a well-known sea legend, and combined it with the Davy Jones myth. Shock! I mean, basically, we were looking for anything to expand on this world where you go to sea and weird things can happen. Visionary director of The Ring, Gore Verbinski, is the man in charge of bringing the Pirates trilogy to the screen. We tend to hire directors that have a very strong visual sense and know exactly what they want and how they want it to look and won't stop until they figure out a way to get it. And Gore's no exception. And action! Verbinski leads an armada of construction crew behind the scenes and remember much of what they built had to float. If they got it wrong the film would literally sink without a trace. I'm surrounded right now by 500 crew people working away between effects and animals, special effects and visual effects and stunts and extras and wardrobe and we have this army that, that not only works on this film, we have this army that has to take care of, you know, with feeding and housing and, and it's just big. It took eight months of construction, 450 craftsmen and visual effects experts to turn the Black Pearl into a seaworthy ship. What we did this time is we took a vessel, an actual uh, you know, ship, a tugboat, basically, and built a ship around it. Built the Black Pearl right around this other ship. So it was seagoing, it traveled from Alabama to the Caribbean on its own. 
uh, it's still with us. It's not uh, on the first movie we had you know, part, uh, portions of ships that were on barges, but never really an entire ship that could function on its own. And, and this time we did that.